Hello Visionaries! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Marisa Talbert. I am the founder and CEO of Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. So we're here with part two of what to expect when working with an attorney. And today I want to talk about something that every client or potential client needs to understand, which is attorney billing. From hourly rates to flat fees, there are several ways that attorneys can charge for their legal services. And understanding these options options can help you make the best decision for your legal needs. So generally, attorneys consider several factors when determining what to charge when they represent you. These factors include the law first and foremost because the law dictates how fees can be charged for certain areas of the law. I'll explain later. Other factors include the type of legal matter, whether a routine transactional matter versus a litigation matter that includes legal research and court filing fees. The complexity of the case and the lawyer's level of experience are also taken into account, just to name a few. So let's go ahead and jump right into different types of billing methods that are most common to attorneys. Number one is hourly billing. Billing. This method is the most common and the most traditional, and it is exactly what it sounds like. The attorney charges you for every hour or every portion of an hour that they spend working on your case. For example, if a lawyer's hourly rate is $300 and they spend three hours drafting a contract for you, then you will be billed $900. This billing method is most common in litigation, corporate law, and other areas of the law where the amount of time required is hard to predict. Here are the pros of hourly billing. One, you only pay for the actual time work. Two, if your attorney is pretty skilled, it'll generally take them less time to complete that work. However, because of their experience, they may charge a higher hourly rate. The cons of hourly billing include the fact that costs can add up very quickly, especially if your case takes longer than expected. And because it's hard to predict costs up front, you are subjected to getting a surprise bill every month. All right, the second method that we'll talk about are flat fees. At TLO, we offer flat fee billing. With flat fee billing, the attorney charges you a set amount for a specific service, no matter how long it takes. This is common for legal matters that are pretty predictable in terms of time and complexity, such as drafting a will or incorporating a business. For example, if a lawyer charges you $3,000 to set up your LLC, then they will charge you that amount no matter if it takes three hours or 10 hours. The pros of flat fees is that you know what you're paying up front with no surprises. The cons of flat fees is that if you change the scope of work, then your attorney may be compelled to either decline the additional work or to charge you an additional fee for any additional work that's outside the scope of what you've both agreed to. The third billing method is known as a contingency fee. Contingency fees are common with personal injury matters, medical malpractice, and even some employment law matters. In this billing structure, the attorney only gets paid if they win your case or secure a settlement for you. The attorney's fee is a percentage of the amount that you recover, usually ranging from 25 to 40%. For example, if you slipped and fell in a Burger King because they didn't put out the wet floor sign and you work with an attorney who gets you a $100,000 settlement and their fee is a 33% contingency fee, then they will earn $33,000 from that $100,000 that you recovered. And if the attorney doesn't win the case, then you typically don't owe them anything in the end. The reason why these types of attorneys can demand such a high percentage is because they're fronting all the legal costs, the court fees, and their attorney's fees for you in the beginning. Generally, this business model requires attorneys to take on only cases that they really, really think they can win. Otherwise, this would be a horrible business model. The pros of contingency fees may be a little bit obvious, which is that there are no upfront costs for the client and the attorney only gets paid if they win. This means that in most cases, the lawyer is highly motivated to secure the highest possible recovery for you because the more that they obtain for you, the more that they receive in attorney's fees. The cons of the contingency fee may be sometimes that if you get a really large settlement or judgment, then of course the attorney's fees can be pretty significant, but well earned. The other con is that by law, contingency fees are prohibited in most types of legal cases. They are generally only allowed for those matters that I mentioned before, 
uh, personal injury, medical malpractice, and some employment law cases. Our next type of billing method that I'll discuss is called the retainer. Retainers are a type of advanced payment to secure the availability of an attorney. This method is usually very common when there's a long-term relationship such as with business law or with family law cases. The retainer method gives you the right to say, I'm calling my attorney. It generally means that you have an attorney available to you at all times. For example, you may pay a $5,000 retainer to an attorney who charges $400 an hour. The $5,000 will go into that client's trust account. When the attorney works on that client's case, the attorney will track its time and then subtract the money that was earned from that $5,000. Let's say in one week's time, the attorney worked three hours on a particular client's case. The attorney will subtract $1,200 from that client's trust account and that client will then have $3,800 left over in their retainer. If the retainer runs out before the case is completed, then the attorney will just ask the client to replenish the trust account or replenish the retainer. The pros of a retainer is that you have an attorney on standby for your legal matters. Another pro, as I mentioned already, is that it's a great option for a long-term relationship between an attorney and a client. The con of a retainer is that it requires a pretty hefty payment up front, especially if you have a complex matter. All right, the next billing method that we will discuss is a hybrid billing method. Some attorneys like myself use hybrid billing methods which combine two or more of the different types of billing structures. For example, at Talbert Law Office, we charge a flat fee for most of our services like contract drafting, trademark registrations, or business formations. But for other matters, we charge a retainer, such as for lawsuits. We also have a new subscription option that we'll be rolling out in the new year. So let's talk about subscription-based billing as well. Subscription-based billing is a much less traditional option for law firms and attorneys, but it's a wonderful option for you, my beloved business owners, creators, and nonprofit leaders. This means that you pay a monthly or an annual fee to have access to a lawyer, yours truly, for ongoing legal matters within your business or your organization, such as ongoing compliance checks or if you need legal questions answered about a specific issue or program in your business or organization. The pro is that you have a lawyer slash business advisor who can become a part of your team and become intimately familiar with your organization. The subscription-based billing also provides the opportunity for you to be proactive in your business and not reactive only when there is a problem. The con is that the subscription model will be limited to specific services. And if you need assistance with a matter that is outside of the subscription plan, then you'll be charged separately for that particular service. So let me know, which billing method do you prefer? Are you interested in having a business lawyer on call for your business needs? How much would you be willing to invest on a monthly basis for a legal bestie? Let me know in the comments. Well, I hope this video helped you. If so, make sure to like, subscribe if you haven't already, and share with a friend. And as always, this is Talbert Law Office, your favorite go-to legal resource for all things business, nonprofit, and intellectual property law. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.